Welcome to Eye to Eye. I'm Robert McLaren, and today we're talking to Caroline Claver about genetics and retinal disease. Welcome, Dr. Claver. Thank you very much. So, um, so much is happening in this field. Um, can you give us some context where we are now compared with 10 years ago in terms of gene-based testing uh, in the treatment of retinal diseases? Oh, so we've, we've come really a long way. So 10 years ago, for most of the Mendelian retinal dystrophies, we, we had no really a clue what was the genetic cause. And we basically stratified patients into phenotypes. And right now, with the whole exome sequencing coming up, sometimes whole genome sequencing, we're able to find the genetic cause in about 70 to 80 percent of, um, of the Mendelian diseases. And it's really helped diagnosis. I think, you know, that's our most progress that we made. And right now we have, we're having starting points for therapy. A lot of therapies are underway, and it's an exciting time. Mm. So you think we're really obliged now to test everyone because they may potentially have a treatable gene. Would that be right? Well, I, you know, if I take this intuitively, I think so. Mm. And, uh, you know, in my country, this is in the Netherlands, is, it is something that we do offer every patient. And I think every patient that is offered, 95% would accept. Mm -hmm. And the insurance company pays for it. Mm, I would totally agree. And how do you see genetic testing changing in future? I mean, there are still some undiagnosed patients. Yes, there is. There is basically, you know, I, I really think every young person with a retinal dystrophy that it has the potential to get some therapy um, should really get tested. There are, of course, always older people that have said, you know, it's not going to benefit me in any way, so forget about it. But I, I would definitely, you know, uh, stimulate all young persons to get tested. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to think that there are many undiagnosed genes that we've yet to discover, or do you think that we've got them all? <laughs> it's a million dollar question. Um, well, we probably didn't get them all, but we, you know, the, the last 10% is probably really hard to find. Yeah. And uh, we, so, and you know, what, what whole genome sequencing has delivered us is that we're more finding intronic variants in genes that we actually already knew. So, whether there's going to be a whole lot, new set of genes, I'm, I'm not really sure. And do you have any idea, prediction, of sort of how many genes arise through de novo mutations? Because obviously, if you look at the percentage every year, you could then extrapolate the percent of patients that might have RP like diseases over future generations. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure what that number is. Do you have an idea? Well, it's difficult to say because we have to sequence, of course, the parents and look at it as a de novo mutation. But I would say at least 5 maybe 10% in yeah. my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> retinal gene therapy trials are now well underway, and at least one so far has received FDA approval, and indeed patients have actually been treated. So which do you think of the next forthcoming programs looks most promising to you? Yeah, so um, I guess it depends more on the disease and the progression of the disease rather than, you know, the, the, the drug or, or the, the company doing the drug. So it, you, know, you need diseases where there is still viable cells in, in the macular area. And, you know, you need diseases that have a fast enough progression to be really uh, an important disease and a, an important risk of visual loss because you have to save something. And uh, so I think to tease out, you know, what are the, the right diseases to treat and the right persons to treat, that's still quite a challenging area. But you're doing all these gene therapy. What's your uh, impression on this? Well, obviously, we're very encouraged by the Croydremia program, which is now in the final stages of phase three. Um, we have the X-linked RP program, uh, which is also in clinical trial at the moment and also looking extremely promising. So it's not just me. Others are also working on different genes. And I think yeah. we try and cover the most important and the most prevalent genes. Um, where we might have challenges is with genes which are very, very rare, where mm -hmm. you perhaps could only do a phase one study and that would right. be all the patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the, some of the diseases still have foveal sparing as one of their natural course uh, uh, items. So when do you think we should target these patients and when should we kind of save <coughs> what's ever there by the natural course? Well, it's a very good question. I think, you know, one has to look at the onset of the disease. Uh, clearly, a gene that causes early onset retinal dystrophy you'd want to treat as early as possible. But some of the more 
classic types of retinitis pigmentosa may present in late childhood, like X-linked RP or choroideremia, we may be able to treat patients at a later stage. There are pros and cons of treating early. Um, it's good to get the gene in before any degeneration, but at the same time, with very young children, it can be technically quite challenging. So I think the answer has become apparent, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly we should be going for younger patients. Yeah, I agree to that. Now, I must ask you, most of the attention has been on macular disease, particularly with new treatments and things being developed, but not many people are thinking about myopia and treatments for myopia. Now, I know that you've been looking extensively at the genetics of myopia. Um, what do you think about treatments for myopia? Um, so, uh, in terms of the genetic background, I'm not so sure right now at the moment. Uh, right now we have more than 400 genes and it's really complicated, you know, what they all annotate to, what kind of proteins, there are a lot of pleiotropic effects, what do they really do in the retina and how do they contribute to myopiogenesis? I think that's the first step we need to find out. Mm. There doesn't seem to be a major gene. There's no major cell type that appears to be the bottleneck. So right now it's really hard to target myopia in terms of our molecular understanding. Mm. Um, so, I mean, we've been treating um, the myopia progression with atropine, mm. and it's yeah. actually yeah. been doing really well despite mm. of the genetic background. So obviously it's targeting something that is ultimately causing scleral remodeling mm. in a final pathway. I expect atropine treatment is a bit cheaper than gene therapy in any case. That is <laughs> certainly true. And do you think a bit like uh, AMD that there may be a final common pathway that we can find in myopia that perhaps we can target? Well, I, I think, you know, ultimately you need scleral remodeling and then, you know, uh, increase of the actual length. So if you can target that phase, I think you, you, you can forget about everything that comes before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, what, does the, what makes the fibroblast, you know, alter and, and cause the, the sclera to remodel? Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate question. Yeah. Now, myopia itself, you know, is not such a bad thing because you, you can have refraction. But the retinal pigment epithelium dysfunction you get is something that potentially is blinding. Um, is there anything you can think of that might be a benefit for those patients? Um, so, in particular for myopia, no, not yet. We also see that, you know, it's not only the, the RPE, it's also the, the entire retina is much thinner. The, sclera, <coughs> the, the choroid is so much thinner. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it has a more uh, aspects to the story. Also, you know, the blood supply and, and, and that part. Um, but I, I, I do think if you can um, think of something that will, you know, have the actual length uh, prohibit to grow longer, that is the ultimate question. Great. Well, thank you very much. I'm very looking forward to your talk this afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for more information on this and related topics, please visit us at theuretina.org. Thank you.